God, we are imperfect, but in your love we are made perfect. Thank you for all that you are, for all that you give us, and for all that we are. In your holy and wonderful name we give thanks. Amen. <laughs>
around. Please go ahead and be seated. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Wimberley United Methodist Church. It's so good to have all of you here with us this morning for worship. As we begin our time together, we have just a few things that we want to lift up. First off, if you will, please take that Welcome to Wimberley card that came in your bulletin. Flip it around and fill out the back for us. Um, this does a few things. One, it just helps us to take attendance, to see who's here and to check in on those who are not. It helps us to make sure that all of our contact information is correct for all gathered. And it helps us to celebrate and follow up with visitors present. So if you'll take a moment, fill this out, please, and then hold on to it until our time of offering, at which point you're going to be invited to place this in the offering plate when it comes around along with whatever gifts you bring this morning for worship. If you have any prayer request cards that you would like lifted up during our time of worship, please grab, if you have any prayer requests, please grab one of the prayer request cards. Uh, they are located in the pew back in front of you. They have a green header on them. And you can fill those out and give those to our ushers um, immediately following the children's time. And we will include those in what we lift up together as, as our corporate prayer. You'll notice that there are some extra flowers up here um, near the altar. These are from Barbara Aiken's funeral on Friday. The family wanted to be able to share some of the beauty and love with us. So uh, we are remembering Barbara especially today and um, celebrating her life and um, the, the wonderful legacy that she has left. Uh, you'll notice we have a, an announcement on the screen. The offering plate is now also on your phone. If you want to be able to give uh, with your smartphone, uh, you can do so in about 30 seconds just by texting Wimberley space give, so Wimberley give to 77977. 
it'll send you a link and you can follow that link and uh, you don't have to just give uh, physically by cash or check, you can also now give electronically as well. Um, Jordan liked that she could do her entire tithe in about 10 seconds the other day. So uh, know that that's an, op an opportunity for you, an offering for you as well. Uh, children are absolutely welcome here in worship, and to tell you a little bit about the things that we offer for our children here in worship, I want to invite Miss Courtney to come up. She's going to tell us the many ways that we can engage together, and then she's going to invite the children to come up for children's time. Good morning, everybody. So glad to see y'all here today. Um, yep, like Wes said, I am Courtney Kale, and I'm one of the family ministry directors here. And we do have a number of ways that uh, children of all ages can participate in our worship every Sunday. We have worship bags that are uh, right out these back doors, little red bags, um, that uh, children can use during the worship service. They have um, symbols um, on a card in the worship bag that correspond to symbols that are in our bulletin so that children whether they can read or not, can follow along during the service and participate um, in various ways. We also have a nursery for infant through third graders out through this um, door old. here. Not third graders. Yeah, no. Maybe. Maybe it depends on the third grader, but no. Through three-year-olds, yes, thank you. Infant through three-year-olds can um, hang out in our nursery and... Um, we also have children's time on the first Sunday of every month, and that's when I get to introduce to the full congregation and our kiddos what um, theme we'll be studying over the next month. We call it our Life app. And um, after children's time and also um, every other Sunday, Wes dismisses the kids to come with me to Kids Church. So that is an opportunity for children kinder through fifth grade to have a worship experience and a lesson that is um, a little bit more age appropriate. So I think I have covered them all. So if any kiddos want to come down here for some kids time, I'd love to share with you. Just Wes? <laughs> come on, Jamila. May I make a suggestion? Um, well, you know, you can see that screen or this screen. I have a video that we're going to watch. Courage. What makes a king out of a slave? Courage. What makes the flag on the mast a wave? Courage. What makes the elephant charge his tusk in the misty mist or the dusky dusk? What makes the muskrat guard his musk? Courage. What makes the sphinx the seventh wonder? Courage. What makes the dawn come up like thunder? Courage. What makes the hot and top so hot? What puts the ape in apricot? What do they got that I ain't got? Courage. Oh, you could say that again. Hmm? Huh? <laughs> It is from the Wizard of Oz. Okay, so what was the Cowardly Lion talking about? Courage. courage. Yeah, courage, okay, which is something that he didn't really have a whole lot of, but he wanted. And that is our life app uh, for this month, for the month of October. And for us, our definition of courage is being brave enough to do what you should do, even when you are afraid. And I did this lesson at um, Sunshine Club at Jacob's Well this past week. And, <laughs> and the cool thing that we discovered or that we really talked about is that you can't have courage unless you also have a little bit of fear. Because otherwise, you don't need to be courageous. Otherwise, you don't need courage. If you're not scared of doing it, you don't need the courage to be able to do it. So it's moving and having the actions and making decisions even when you're kind of scared or nervous or worried to do it. You're scared of monsters? Scared of wolves? Yeah. Well, we also talked about um, in Sunday school this morning that there are some healthy fears, you know? Wolves and monsters, I think, are, are healthy fears, and, um, but we're going to discover some ways that we can be courageous with God. 
Our memory verse this month is Joshua 1, 9, B. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid and do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. And I have given the challenge to our kiddos, and I can extend that out to the congregation, that if at any point over the next month you can come up and tell me that memory verse, from memory, not reading it from the Bible, that you will get a surprise. So, there you go. If you can do it, you will uh, get one of our, our, one le our family ministry prizes. So, I encourage you guys to join us um, for Kids Church anytime and for small group that happens during Sunday school hour every Sunday at 10 o'clock. So now will you guys pray with me? Dear God, Dear you can God. repeat after me. Dear God, Dear God, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you so much for being with us. Wherever we go. Wherever we go. Help us to be courageous. Help us to be courageous. Even when we are afraid. Even when we are afraid. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, so now kiddos can come all the way to the back door with me and we can go to kids' church. All right. Thank you, Miss Courtney. All right, as our, our kids are going to Kids Church, uh, if we have any prayer request cards that need to make their way forward, now is the time to kind of pass them into the middle, and then our usher will grab them and bring them up to me. Thank you, Ty. You'll also have the opportunity during our prayer to lift up any concerns or joys that you have where you're seated, um, you can do so both silently or out loud. Let us go to God in prayer. God who created the heavens and the earth. O oh God who created the universe and everything in it. O oh God who created us. We come to you now in prayer. We come to you ready to give to you our joys and concerns, ready to share with you our lives, ready to hear from you, ready to have our eyes opened for how you are at work in the world around us. So God, hear what we have to say. Respond as only you can and show us how you are working within and through our lives. We lift up our prayers to you. We pray with Peyton Reynolds for Judy Lambert, who is in the ICU. Judy is an aunt of the Reynolds family. So, Lord, we pray for Judy. We pray for the Reynolds that they may be a source of strength and hope for her. God, this is the only prayer that has been written down, but it is by no means the only prayer on our hearts. So hear our joys and our concerns as we lift them up to you both silently and out loud now. God, hear our prayers. Respond as only you can. And God, use us that we, your created people, would join you in the work of creation, of salvation, of sanctification of the world around us. All this we pray in the name of Jesus Christ our Savior and our Lord and the one who taught us to pray by saying, Our Father, who is in heaven, holy is your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. 
Lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Amen. As our ushers come forward, uh, remember please to place your Welcome to Wimberley card in the offering plate as it comes along, um, and let us pray. God, receive now these gifts that we give unto you. May you bless them. May you multiply them to see your work done in this world. And God, may we as a people offer ourselves as a blessing to you. This we pray in your name. Amen.
Thank you. Genesis chapter 1, starting with verse 26. Then God said, let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky, over the livestock and all the wild animals and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them, male and female, he created them. God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and increase in number, fill the earth and subdue it, rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky and over every living creature that moves on the ground. The word of God for the people of God. Let us pray. God, we have heard your word with our ears. Now speak it to our hearts that we might encounter you during this time of meditation. May the word that is spoken and the word that is heard this day be not mine, but yours. This we pray in your name. Amen. In the beginning... God created. This is the very first characteristic that we have of God and the very first act that we hear of God as well. That God, in the very beginning, is one who creates. Out of nothing, God creates. Out of darkness, God creates. Out of chaos, God creates. This is an integral truth about who God is and what God does in the world. God speaks and life happens just like that. God speaks and light appears. God speaks and the firmament between the waters is put in place. God speaks and land appears where the seas had been before. God speaks, and the heavenly bodies fill the sky. God speaks, and fish fill the sea, and birds fill the sky, and vegetation of all kinds fills the earth. God speaks, and land animals cover the earth. And then finally, as we heard today just a moment ago, <clears throat> God speaks. And humanity is born. We had a um, Bible study on Genesis 1 this last Wednesday during our, our Wednesday programming. And uh, we, we looked at more than just these three verses that we read earlier. We looked at the entirety of the, the chapter 1 of Genesis. And I love the questions that we tried to chew through. Um, we didn't have answers to all of them, but we at least tried to ask them and, and tease them apart. Um, there were questions like, what's the literal nature of this chapter? Was it really seven days? Were they really 24-hour periods? Is this really the order in which God created everything in the heavens and the earth? What do we do with the, the plurality versus the singularity of God in this text? For as we read, when God speaks, God says, let us create in our image. But when the narrator speaks of God... The narrator either uses God in a singular form or the masculine pronoun, he. So when God speaks, God seems to be plural. When the narrator speaks, God seems to be singular. What do we do with that? We also ask the question of how long ago did this happen? How old is the world? Geologists will tell you it's somewhere around 4 billion years old. But those who take scripture literally here in Genesis 1, will tell you that it's probably around 6,300 years old. Four billion and 6,300 is quite a difference. What do we do with that? And the question that I loved that honestly I'd never, uh, never realized was a question that we should ask when we're reading this text until someone asked it on Wednesday, 
What do we do with verse 29, where God tells humanity that all of the, the plants that yield seeds and all of the, the fruit-bearing trees that yield seeds with inside them are to be food for the people? Does that mean that we're supposed to be vegetarians? Because i got to tell you, I love my bacon cheeseburgers. So what do we do with this? What do we do with the many questions that come up in just this one chapter of Scripture? One of the questions that I've been really uh, wrestling with this week that we didn't get to ask on Wednesday um, is, why is it that humanity is set apart from all the other created beings? Why is it that we hear that the fish of the sea and the birds of the sky are created, that all of the land-dwelling animals are created, and only after that is humanity created. Now, some will tell you that it's because we are the epitome of creation. Like everything else was just a rough draft. But the final draft, I mean, we look good really good. That's what scripture says, right? God looked upon all God had created and saw that it was really good. So maybe we are the epitome of that which has been created. The only problem with that is there are multiple times in scripture where we hear that we are lesser than the angels. Angels as beings that don't even show up in our creation narrative. And so where do they fit in in this story? And where do we, as the epitome of creation, truly fall if there's something that has been made that is greater even than us? Maybe it's not that we're the epitome of creation then, but maybe there is still some intentionality behind us being the last that was created. Maybe we can figure that out if we study what God says to those first humans. See, God gives them two commands in this story. The first one is the same that God gives to the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and all of the land-dwelling animals. Be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth. The second immediately follows that one. Fill the earth and master it. Take dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and the land-dwelling animals. Well, I think it's pretty safe to say that we can figure out what that first command is all about. And I think it's pretty safe to say that in the years since creation, we have done a pretty good job as created beings of being fruitful and multiplying. So much so that it's arguable that we have done too good a job at this first command. When we have billions of people in the world when we have entire countries that are trying to stave off over, overpopulation by limiting the number of children who can be born and even trying to limit the gender of those children who can be born, it is safe to say that we have come to a place in our global history where we have been fruitful and multiplied. The second command, though, takes a little bit more unpacking. What does it mean to master the earth? What does it mean, as some other translations say, to take charge of it, subdue it, to have dominion over it? Well, the Hebrew word that is used here in this command from God is the word radah. Radah has some some interesting translation issues with it. Um, You see, it can mean um, a word like um, to rule entirely or have dominion over but it also has this this connotation to it, this flavor to it that says that what we're doing is not just ruling or having dominion over, but we are stewarding something. That we are to serve as stewards of creation. Now, the first time that I heard the word steward uh, was not in the context of a Bible study or in the context of the church, The first time I heard the word steward was in the context of the Lord of the Rings. 
because I'm a nerd. Y'all know that about me right now, right? It's been a while. Y'all should know that by now. And in The Lord of the Rings, um, there's the, this character who is the, the steward of Gondor. He is the steward over uh, a nation within this, this, this fictional world. And his job is to care for this kingdom until the king returns. His job is to care for the land and the people and all of the resources until the one true king returns to Gondor and takes over. That's what a steward does. We have references of this in scripture as well. Jesus talks about stewards a number of times in his parables. Sometimes they're really wise. Sometimes they're really wicked. We also hear stories like um, Abram's steward in Genesis, who before Abram and Sarai have their son, uh, Abram is worried that because he doesn't have any children of his own, all of his inheritance will go to his chief slave, his steward, the one who was in charge of taking care of all of his household. And so this command to Radah, this command to subdue, to master, to take charge of the world is a command to steward the world, to care for God's creation in God's name. This is made even more clear if we study the works of the ancient rabbis. You know, I, I, I fall into this trap a lot. I, I forget that as a Christian, the text that I hold to be sacred is a text that people for millennia before me held to be sacred as well. And so it's often helpful to go to what our, our Jewish brothers and sisters have studied to find out how we can best understand some of these texts. And the ancient rabbis give us a lot on this specific part of Genesis 1. They say, God intentionally created us, humanity, last, so that we could never credit ourselves as creators. We were made last so that there was no question about God making everything else. For we couldn't have participated in that because we weren't here yet. God, according to these rabbis, is Berea, the one-time creator. The one who creates everything from nothing. God did the great work of creation and then set us as humanity into creation as created beings. The rabbis go on. God also intentionally created us, humanity, with the ability and drive to continue creating. So even though we weren't part of that one-time creative process, we have been given the creative gifts. We are made in the very image of God. And so whereas we are not Berea, the one-time creator, the rabbis say that we are Yetzira, the ongoing creators. We are made to continue the creation process by working alongside God and joining God in this great holy work. We didn't make anything, but we continue creating as we walk alongside God in all that we do in life and in creation. We are made in the very image of God so that we might continue the work of God in the world, to continue creating in the name of the Almighty. The charge of Radha, to take charge, to master, to rule over the world. It's a charge of moral responsibility to care for God's creation and continue creating in God's name. So brothers and sisters, are you ready to be a co-creator? Are you ready to work with God in the creating process of bringing God's kingdom to this place? It's what we were made for. May we engage joyously in this Yetzirah work. 
May we take charge of the world around us, answering that command of Rada. And may we be co-creators in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. As we move now into a time of preparing to share Holy Communion, I want to invite Marcus, is Marcus still in here? Marcus and Dan to come up and tell us a little bit about what our communion rail offering will go toward this morning. And Laura too, awesome, we're gonna have a party up here. Thank you. Uh, I don't know if we have pictures. Do we? Are we going to have pictures today? Yay! Here's some uh, photographs. Photographs of Eagle Pass. I've been in a relationship with Eagle Pass for about 15 years, going down and working with the tornadoes, the floods. The latest call was to go help the missionaries. Uh, excuse me, help the immigrants coming across the the border, and we've been helping with that since July the 1st of July. And here's some of the some of our teams that have gone. Uh, Laura's just uh, has just lately gone and Dan's been going for a long time down helping with uh, rebuilding after the tornadoes and floods and Bob has been coming too to help in missions uh, regarding the tornadoes and floods and just normal repairs on houses in Eagle Pass. So we've, we've had this relationship uh, with Eagle Pass for a long time. Now, uh, we've done a great job as this church in giving donations to Eagle Pass. Uh, we've done a great job of sending teams down there. Uh, since I've been there in July, I've met 6,000 people, immigrants coming across, and I've spoken with just about every one of them to find out where they're coming from, their stories, and of course, why they were coming here, and because this is the, to run away from the persecution, and because this is a land of freedom. So right now, uh, we've uh, gathered donations for the past three or four months. I think there's, uh, you can see a picture up in the far right. That's the uh, Border Patrol bringing uh, donations. They're in with this, uh, they're in with us, uh, hand in hand, helping also with this uh, mass immigration. Uh, lately, uh, there's a, you can see a picture of the showers that the Samaritan's Purse donated for the immigrants to take a shower in. Now, there's a small picture of the damage of the fire that happened six weeks ago. Six weeks ago, the parsonage right next to the church burned down, and it also affected the church that we're working in, and it uh, destroyed all the no donations that everybody has taken, the, the clothes and the toiletries and everything. So you can see uh, one of the trucks that went down there from our donations <laughs> loaded down, and then in the middle you can see the uh, all the donations on the shelves, there, which we uh, took out of the bags and put out as men's, women's, children's clothing. And then to the right, you can see uh, again the damage that the fire did. So I think right now, I called yesterday and they said the, the main donation they need right now is monies just to replenish, to pay for help, pay for the bills for the electric and uh, some of the, the other bills that they have. And then uh, soon we're gonna ask for more donations as far as clothing, and toiletries. So I think we're up here now just asking for money donations and to thank you very much. I, it's been a privilege for all of us to be in service and to be representatives of you, this very loving congregation. And does anybody want to say anything? Laura, you kind of are a new person. Why don't you come and just say a few things that you saw and what you think about it? I mean, you're kind of, you, I think from your well, I was really amazed at the organization and the caring. One of the things that was really special to me was that the Border Patrol came to the church and said, we need your help. And the church immediately got on it, and they had limited resources the whole bit, and yet nothing stopped them. And they just did a fabulous job, continued to do a very strong job, 
reaching out, comforting, being there with them. It's, um, it's a tough role to play, but it also, you just, you have to feel because some of the people come in and if the families here have not sent their donation or their money in or they have not confirmed, they're put back out. They don't get to be here. And we've seen some of that where there were a lot there was a lot of fear. And when I was there, fortunately everyone was able to make it and to keep on going. But it's just what they're doing and the Border Patrol here is really doing a great job. So Thank you very much. Gee, we, uh, Bob is retired as being a missionary, so we need three new missionaries to fill his shoes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank y'all. So if you feel led to, um, to give toward this mission, um, please feel free to leave your offerings at the altar rail as we come up for communion. Now, if you would please pray with me. <clears throat> Holy God, we know that as amazing a work as creation was, Lord, you did not stop there. When you saw that your creative work that was good, so good, had turned away, had allowed themselves, ourselves, to be caught up in sin and death, Lord, you gave yourself for us. You who created us then redeemed us. And you call us into better and fuller communion with you even today. So God, we celebrate all that you have done for us. And we ask as we prepare to come to your meal to receive of this gift of grace, uh, that you would again show yourself to us in mighty ways. That we, as we come to your table, would meet our creator, our savior, and our sanctifier. That we would know that our God is present here and that we would leave here having met, having experienced our God. Remind us what happened that night so long ago as you gathered with your friends for the Passover, as you took the bread, gave thanks for it, broke it and gave it to them saying, take and eat, this is my body given for you. As you took the cup, gave thanks for it and gave it to them saying, drink from this all of you, this is the cup of the new covenant, my blood poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So God, we remember what you have done. We celebrate your gift of grace, and we come once again to participate in the salvation that is amply present at your table. So meet us here, Lord. Pour out your spirit upon us, and bring us together in ways that only you can, as creation, as co-creators, as a redeemed people. This we pray in your name. Amen. This is the body of Christ given for you. And this is the blood of Christ poured out for you. As our servers come up, we just want to remind you about a couple things. One, we'll be serving by intinction, which means you'll get a piece of bread. You'll dip it into the grape juice. We'll have two serving aisles um, on these uh, kind of middle side aisles. Um, and then a gluten-free station here in the, in the middle. Uh, I also want to remind you, and this is so important, you are welcome here at this table. You are welcome to come and receive, for all are welcome. All have a place at this table that is not ours, that is not the Methodist churches, but that is Christ Jesus. So come, receive, and may you meet Christ here, either for the millionth time, or maybe even for the first time. Amen. <laughs>
As we prepare to go from this place, um, we just have one announcement to lift up, um, and it's a very important one. Our pumpkins arrive today. Uh, so we will have a, a light lunch in the fellowship hall for any who are able and willing to stay. Um, and then we will be unloading pumpkins uh, very shortly after that. Our pumpkin patch this year is going to be a joint endeavor as a, a fundraiser for our family ministries ministry and also our Bright Beginnings Preschool Ministries. So uh, being a part of this unload, taking a, a shift, selling pumpkins, it's a great way to support the young people in our church and our community. Um, so please consider how you can be a part of that. And if, like me, you forgot at this morning that pumpkins were coming today, it's okay if you need to go home and get different shoes and clothes so that you can get in the, the trailer and help us and not get your nice new sports coat all nice and dirty so uh, you know know that that's always an option as well but uh, please join us if you are able to for that and throughout the month of October if you would like to help out with that I know that we would love as much help as we can get uh, with that invitation before you let us stand and sing together our final song benediction go from this place as co-creators with god go from this place knowing that you are yet you are ongoing creators working alongside bera the one creator go knowing that you have been given a command from god that goes all the way back to the beginning of creation to care for god's creation and go in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. <laughs>